everyone and welcome to nine on the positive side this weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. This story takes us to historic Washington for people who live there. It's a place they know and love and visitors do too. They love it. As Ken Watlington reports now a female veteran owned business is bringing out locals and out of towners together in a truly unique spot. It's a piece of Washington's history. We value community here. The Bowers Trip House, built in 1921 on North Market Street, is now a boutique hotel. We love to open our doors for different opportunities to let other people see what's going on here. Ellen Brabo bought the home and opened the L Hotel in 2022. A veteran of the U.S. Army, Ellen lived all over the world before calling Washington home. I worked as a public affairs officer. I was stationed in South Korea and in Germany, um, spent six months in Poland. But after transitioning out of the military during the pandemic, Ellen dreamed of a career in hospitality. That's when she came across the Bowers Trip House on Facebook of all places. I felt like it met all the needs of what I was looking for, for a space where you could create a boutique hotel-esque concept, but still keep that intimate at home environment, your home away from home, right? But for me, it was more about the community that I felt here when I came to Washington. The hotel features five guest rooms, plus a billiards room and a sunroom with activities for all ages. Outside, you'll find a huge front porch and in the back, a gazebo with a fire pit. You can even check out a bicycle for a ride around Washington. It's a great honor. It is a great honor. Um, it is not lost on me that I get to be a part of the storied history, not only of Washington, but of the Bowers Trip House. So I'm the fifth owner. Um, a former mayor lived in this house. I mean, big shoes to fill, right? But I think it just really speaks to the fact that this is a space meant to be shared. Um, it's not meant to be kept to myself. It's meant for others to come and enjoy. And that doesn't mean just out of town visitors. Ellen wants locals to stop by too. Uh, one of the things that's been really fun with the hotel is thinking outside the box with how we can use the space, right? So it's not just coming to stay for a night. We host yoga once a month on the front porch, which has been really fun for our community members, but then from out of town guests can attend these as well. And then there's those who choose the L to make the memory of a lifetime. When I personally took on the property, I didn't think about somebody wanting to get married in the backyard. But then when somebody knocked on the door and asked, it's been so cool to see. And I'm like, wow, now they're part of the special story of the house. A story that will continue to be written. Please come visit us, but you might end up staying. <laughs> I think you right. often find people that come to these smaller communities, especially here in eastern North Carolina. They fall in love with the water, but more than that, they fall in love with the people. And that was Nine on Your Side's Ken Watlington reporting. The Southeast's largest Old Threshers reunion was in full swing in Davidson County. Chad Tucker found a Pamlico County woman there who made the trek to help preserve our past. <laughs> I am spinning wool from the sheep. This wool's been treated at a meal and turned into roving. Myra Jane Price is happily living in the past. The whole family does all kinds of crafts. Okay. It's the way we were raised. She was raised always working with her hands. This is the tensionizer. Just so spinning just a came naturally. Now, when I made my first blankets, uh, the first two were drop spindle, and that took a couple months. Time can get away here. from you when you're bringing history alive. This is the beginning right here. Without this, there's no clothes. We're still in animal skins. This treasured piece of the past it goes by many names. Uh, this is a walking wheel, great wheel, or a wool wheel. So just living history just helps make history real so it's worth studying. These are jean rugs made from strips of jeans. And the outcome of all that work comes in many varieties of fabrics that we find in our daily lives. The newly created material is then brought together and another piece of the past, a loom. And it just seemed the best use of my wool was to weave it. The cadence is music to her ears. So the harnesses are controlled by my feet. Saving this piece of history. So it, once you got the loom set up, you got your bobbins ready, you just worked away and the music was strong. Time can get away from you. When you see the strength and simplicity of how life used to be. Because I come from a generation of hard workers. And learn the roots of where it all began. You're at the end of making the thread, but you're only at the beginning of making a garment. 
in Davidson County. It all started with somebody twisting. North Carolina. It's just part of the cycle of life is the thread. It all starts with the thread. I'm Chad Tucker. So I, I just think it's wonderful to live history. After a naturalization ceremony in Lenore County earlier this week, 27 people can now call themselves United States citizens. Not in your sides, Abigail Velez takes us there. This is one of the most joyous occasions I have as a member of Congress, seeing um, individuals who come into our country, they've studied, they've done their interviews, and they come into the country the right way. For the first time since the pandemic, an in-person ceremony was held to grant citizenship to migrants. Migrants like Jennifer Grady. She's from Chihuahua, Mexico, and says everyone's journey is different. So I was under DACA, then I, you know, got married, became a resident, had to become, a, had to be a resident for about three years. After three years, and I could apply for my citizenship. Um, so it was a lengthy process, a lengthy, a very expensive process, but you know, we're here, we made it. <laughs> U.S. District Judge James C. Dever III oversaw the ceremony and says we can learn a lot about determination by looking at this group of people. I think all of these new citizens had to study and pass a, 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 a test about history and civics and I would submit that each of our middle school students certainly by the end of eighth grade should be able to pass that test like they know two plus two and if we're not doing that we need to change the curriculum so that we have a populace that understands history and civics the way these 27 new citizens do. And that was nine on your sides. Abigail Velez reporting for us. Ahead on nine on the positive side, a taste of comfort food. Meet the woman some call the hush puppy queen. Some say comfort food is like a big hug. At a barbecue spot in Shelby, North Carolina, one worker says love is what makes the food so good. Some call her the hush puppy queen. John Lee tells us her presence makes the restaurant feel like home. What can we do for you? Barbecue landmarks are a bastion of sensory overload. You, Thank you bud. the sights and smells. You know it's tasty if a customer rubs his hands together after a good bite. Red Bridge's Barbecue Lodge has been a staple in Shelby for 78 years. We've been coming here since we were 16 years old. The Cloningers are regulars. They drive from Marion every week. The food, naturally, and the hush puppies. I think they're important because they good. So good that those puppies have a rather devout following. How many hush puppies do you think you make a day? Ooh. Delia Livesey is the face of consistency. Have you taste one of my hush puppies? Put some old mix in. When she's working, owner Natalie Ramsey can rest easy. She knows it like the back of her hand. She will not look at a recipe. I know it by heart. Recipe? Don't even ask. Do you tell me anything? No, I'm not really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's Co workers also call her Dee Dee, but she's also earned the title of Hush Puppy Queen. They come here and they want to eat good food. That's why I do it for love. Hard to believe the Queen began her reign when Ronald Reagan was president. The matriarch of the restaurant, the late Mama B, hired her on the spot when Delia was just in high school. Somebody had told me to, uh, they know a place where I can work, and I called Mama B, and she told me to come the next day. Forty years ago. And My first job. Now this is the pit where all of the magic happens. Folks have been picking out on their pulled pork for four generations now, but it wouldn't quite be the same without Dee Dee's deep fried delights. Their hush puppies are crisp and they're delicious and they're always that way. You ever seek a bite? Yes, sir. <laughs> a taste of tradition goes a long way at Red Bridges. Mama B died in 2008, but her memory lives on in the form of food and friendships. Mm, that's what we call Mama B, just like a mama. Oh, she was like a mama to you? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, so I miss her too. Natalie is Mama B's granddaughter. I come in the back door, she comes and hugs me every single day and has from the day I was born. This kind of continuity is rare these days. Folks like Dee Dee are like a bridge to a proud past. Oh, 
They family, and I love it. They are family. In Shelby. So I get so much joy out of it. John Lee, Queen City News. The American flag that inspired Francis Scott Key to write the national anthem is now on display. We'll take a deeper dive into the flag's history and the significance of the Star Spangled Banner when we come back. The flag that inspired Francis Scott Key to write the words of our national anthem is now on display. It's over at the National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. Christina Ruffini recently went to the museum. She spoke with the people behind the exhibit about the flag's legacy and how it serves as an enduring symbol of democracy. In the murky waters of Baltimore Harbor, between the Chesapeake Bay and a decommissioned fort, a red, white, and blue buoy marks the spot. Behind us is our Francis Scott Key buoy. What it is is it is a marker for where Francis Scott Key observed the British bombarding Fort McHenry for a 24 hour period. With the War of 1812 raging, the British had already marched on Washington and set fire to the White House when they set their sights and ammunition on the last defense of a young nation's industrial port. American Francis Scott Key was aboard a British ship at this spot in the harbor. And as the sun began to break over the water, he squinted through the smoke to see who had won. The morning after, they raised a 30 by 42 foot American flag and he saw that and he wrote a poem and that poem became the national anthem. This is the actual flag Key saw, the Star Spangled Banner, now housed in a climate controlled light protected chamber at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. They know that the Star Spangled Banner is here. Jennifer Jones is a military history curator and part of the team tasked with preserving this OG piece of Americana. The museum receives about 4 million visitors a year, and I think this is probably one of the things people say, oh, we have to see this. Was it about a flag? I think it embodies our values, and everybody's values are different, and I think that people bring their own ideals to this object, not just this flag, but any American flag. After the war, the flag and the words it inspired became a sensation. Key's poem was quickly set to a popular, and ironically British, tune, and soon rebranded as the Star Spangled Banner. In 1931, it finally became America's official national anthem. Those words were inspirational to a nation fighting to become independent and to create a more perfect union. For more than 200 years, these tattered threads and the stanzas they inspired have meant different things to different people. Triumph and tragedy discovery They've got the flag up now. and disappointment, injustice, and salvation. We hope that people come and think about what it means to them. It's a bit of an American Rorschach test where they can... Sure, it's it'd be the fragility. I mean, if you look at how fragile the flag is, that's really synonymous with our democracy. You know, we have to be participants. We have to be thinking about it. We have to protect it. Christina Ruffini, CBS News. Looking for a new recipe? Maybe this three-year-old chef can help you out and has some inspiration for you. We'll introduce you to Jay next. He may just be a toddler, but a three year old in Pennsylvania, as you can see right here, has a passion for cooking. So maybe you're wondering what are his secret ingredients? Smiles, silly faces and a goal to bring joy into people's lives. Maggie Smolka has this heartwarming story. Let's make some strawberries. 
for Gordon Ramsay, Guy Fieri, and Emerald. Oh, the PTT. There's a new chef in the kitchen. Hello, pepperoni. And today, Tea. with a little assistance from Mom. And we'll make another one for dinner tonight. He's teaching us how to make one delicious stromboli. Now some cheese. Stuffed with cheese. What the? Meat. Open the other. And sauce. Whoa, it's melted. The three-year-old behind the apron and chef's hat is Jay. <laughs> In his parents' kitchen, he cooks up all sorts of recipes. These videos all started on a dreary day. Mom wanted to make cookies, Jay wanted to help. And she decided to grab her phone to capture those goofy faces he likes to make. People ask us, like, is he like that all the time or is it just for the videos? I said, no, that's how he is all the time. <laughs> Let's fake it. So just like you see here, she propped up the camera. Come on, it's the waterfall. Spliced the video together and shared it with some family. And they just thought it was hilarious and kept asking, when's the next video coming? When's the next video coming? And that's where it started. <laughs> Whoa! Mom starts sharing on social media, and the next thing you know, videos like this one. Jay making a chocolate cake is getting about 500,000 views on YouTube and counting. Shares are coming from all over the nation and even other countries. You know, I've said from the beginning, I don't care how many views or followers he gets on, on YouTube or Instagram or anything like that. Our main mission is to just continue to bring people happiness and joy through these videos. Let's make some fresh cut fries. Jay shows us how to make things like fresh cut fries. So give them to a ice bag. Chicken noodle soup, lasagna, the list goes on. As long as he loves to keep making them, we'll keep doing them. But he also shows us how the simplest things can spread positivity, and that's why they do it. You know, everybody's got something going on in their lives that nobody knows about. Everybody's got their own thing going on, and this is one thing that people can agree on is it brings happiness to their day. The priceless faces. All done. A passion for cooking. Let's serve it up. And just pure enjoyment from a toddler. Ready? Make the perfect recipe for a brighter day. He doesn't have any clue <laughs> of the joy that he brings people. He's He's gotten stopped by people that I don't even know in the grocery store and are like, is that Jay? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Say cheers. Yeah. cheers. So what are we learning to make next? I want to make, I want to make strawberry a hundred times. A hundred times? Well, it's still being decided. Homemade potato chips? We do know one thing. He'll definitely be serving up some smiles. Definitely a story that you just have to smile about. Jay is amazing. And now I guess I'm going to go make some stromboli. Thanks so much for joining us on 9 on the Positive Side. Have a great weekend, everyone. And we are ending with some fireworks. If you didn't get enough on 4th of July, we have a treat for you. We'll see you next time.